and we are recording what's going on everybody this yo what's going on luke uh hey everyone this is a pre-recorded live so you know when i set this up just want to let you guys know i'm probably not gonna be able to respond to live comments but hey uh welcome everyone to ip stream it's been a while uh you know sometimes we got things in life that goes on and um just gotta take care of it so thank you all for you know tuning in and uh let's get started here luke thank you so much for coming on tonight it's yeah it's been yeah. a long time coming i know we've been planning this for quite a while now yeah it's for, for about like a few months so yeah yeah <laughs> I'm glad that we can make this uh recording um, you had stuff i had stuff so yeah exactly we just all sometimes we just got things going on like i said but yeah i'm, yeah. I'm happy to have this time uh so luke you know thank you for coming on um I guess, you know, for the audience, maybe if you could just share a little bit about you know, yourself, maybe uh, about amateur archaeology, you know, what, what made you really want to start your YouTube channel? So I have always been interested in history. Um, I think what really did it for me as a kid was um, uh, playing Civilization when my mom got that for me um, at the bookstore. I was able to go and pick out a lot of books and um, uh I started playing that game and just seeing the different figures you can play as the different leaders in it throughout history, Montezuma, um, Julius Caesar. And I would kind of go and look them up and, and research them. So that kind of really got me interested in um, history itself. And so I started reading a lot of history books as I got older. And then um, uh, from there, essentially, I, I started to get a little more into like um, uh, Roman greek history and then i wanted to like start studying older uh stuff uh, mesopotamia akkad sumer um uh, babylon um assyria um egypt as well um but i i thought it was cooler because mesopotamia was a lot you know less talked about than egypt um and then i really started getting more interested um in kind of like earlier than that the uh, prehistory stuff so um, uh, especially in Anatolia and uh, uh, even in Mesoamerica as well um, and uh, Peru. I know we were talking about Corral last time we spoke in Peru, um, but uh, that's how I really started getting to uh, archaeology and that's why I started amateur archaeology because obviously I'm not an archaeologist, but um, I wanted to kind of uh, um, bring some more of these like dry topics that I was reading about um, that I personally enjoyed and make it more interesting for uh, other people. Cause I've read a lot of like, um, you know, uh, published articles through Cambridge that are really fascinating, like about this site called WF 16 in Jordan and how it may have been connected to Gobekli Tepe um, in present day Turkey. And it was so dry, but so fascinating. So um, I'm actually going to be releasing a video on that soon. But um, that's how I kind of wanted to start the channel, make it really interesting, make it fun, quick, fast paced, but still covering the bare bones basics and uh, bringing these kind of dull topics to a more um, fun manner. All right. Awesome. Thank you for sharing that. And for ladies and gentlemen, uh, for those that are interested in Luke's channel, I will have the link uh, in the description. So feel free to check his you know, channel out, please. Mm -hmm. He makes really good t uh, content. I, I found a lot of your videos really interesting. Luke, yeah. Uh, especially the ones, uh, you know, about Mesoamerica, about in Peru. Um, yeah. The ones about the Sumerian. Just, you guys kind of like go all over, I think. it's very, Yeah. that <laughs> That's uh, my kind of weakness is because like, I'll like study a wide range, even different time periods. And, and sometimes I don't hone in too much on, on one period. Um, I'm kind of all over the place on that. So. Oh no, it's okay. I like it. Yeah. I was saying as a compliment, I, I enjoy it actually. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to start uh, actually voicing them myself. So I, I currently is a, a voice actor who's actually a, a, a good friend of mine um, who has experience with YouTube too. And he was telling me like, yeah, go for it. And, um, he was even telling me I, I should do it, but I brought him on at first and uh, he's going to still do a lot of my shorts, but um, I kind of have the setup now. You got Snoop in the background there. Um, nice. uh, this cool stuff, little Roman head statue, a little globe back there. Got some lights and 
Um, uh, I, I saw how you did your podcast as, as well. Um, and I, I like that setup too. So, um, that kind of inspired me to kind of get out there more. Wow. Thanks, man. I appreciate you yeah. saying that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Before, you know, uh, I had to switch locations a little bit, but I had like a bookshelf and, you know, I've been to a few countries, uh, around the world and I always like to collect some sort of trinket or something, uh, yeah. you know, memory. So I would actually have it like in the back, like my bookshelf, you know, near my books as well. So yeah, thank you. I, I like to show the audience a little bit sometimes. Yeah. But, um, you should get but, some, uh, ancient coins from each country you go to. Like thank you for telling coins. me coins. Yeah. Like that's a money. great idea. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 uh, tried to find one in Turkey. Um, I wasn't there long enough, but, uh, um, I'm kind of trying to do that now is like, if I go somewhere cool, I'm going to, I'm going to find like the oldest piece of currency I can possible. Obviously there's a lot of fakes out there, but, um, that's kind of like a side hobby of mine too. Okay, cool. Nice. Yeah. Definitely. I'll have to look at the currency next time more and try to find some more ancient once um i was gonna ask you know going back to like your videos and whatnot you know when someone like watches one you'll have like a the, like a british voice actor or yes a... yeah okay cool so he's actually um british half british and half uh, uh korean okay he, uh, li- he, he actually lives in korea he, he does a lot of radio stuff over there um and uh yeah, so he he got into voice acting. He used to do a lot of YouTube videos, more so science channels and stuff. Um, but I think people kind of want a, a a face behind the channel. Um, so that's why I decided that soon I'm going to be slowly transitioning into that. Um, I also run a Facebook page called Ancient Library. Um, we do a lot of interviews on there. Um, and I know I, I talk to you. I, I would love to have you on there as well. And uh, Yvonne, who I run the uh, page with, um, I want to introduce you to him, too, because I he knows way more than me. Um, he's fluent in Spanish as well. He lived in uh, uh, Mexico for a while. His dad was a soccer coach, so um, he is very well connected. Um, he was on Gaia TV over in uh, uh, Europe, which is kind of like uh, their equivalent of the uh, History Channel, I believe. Um but uh yeah he he's very into you know um different pre-incan sites um moche chimu um all of those so yeah thank you i'd be happy to meet him that'd be great to come on as well so i appreciate you saying that um yeah i guess like uh when i'd watch a few few, uh, videos at first i had like heard the british like voice i was like wait a second like how is he doing <laughs> I, I don't sound that good. I don't sound that good. <laughs> yeah, I was like, that's using what, AI. <laughs> no, and, and that's the thing. A lot of people like think it's AI, but it's not. Like I, I know the person, you know, and uh I try to stay as far away from AI as possible. Um I know there's a lot of people saying, like, oh, you should use chat B- GPT to like write a script, and it's like I'm not using chat GPT. That's just kind of you know, like there's no person behind that. There's no soul into that. There's no hard research into that. And a lot of times chat GPT has been um, proven to be wrong on several occasions. Like yeah. when I first heard about it, like I was, I was typing stuff in like, um, uh, like tell me about, I think I said like the great lighthouse or something like that. How is it made? And it's like, um, a hundred thousand tons of like bricks or something were brought from uh uh like this part of egypt and this and this and i'm like okay what's your source on this and it couldn't tell me and it's like we actually may be wrong about this and it's like okay this is this is sus yeah yeah uh you know that reminds me of a a few times i've gotten into it with chat um gpt as well Uh, (laughs) yeah i have a couple things yeah yeah that they were just inaccurate about it. then they would just be like oh i'm sorry you're right and like yeah that's right yeah that, <laughs> that happened to me too with um uh it was i believe it was a, a a battle between the french and netherlands or something like that and i think it was like the french cavalry um beat um their navy or something which sounds weird 
because you know it's like how do they beat the navy the ocean separates them but the ice was actually frozen and they surrendered so i i asked chat gpt i'm like what was the one battle in the world that uh cavalry ever beat a navy and it was like oh i don't think that's possible and then i said yes it was this battle and it's like oh sorry i'm wrong you're right this was it so yeah, yeah. It, it, it it's weird I, I i don't know and I, I know you and i have had lots of conversations about ai um it's kind of kind of scary <laughs> the direction we're heading in it is a little bit scary especially like uh you know in, in terms of people's jobs you know in future yes. employment as well uh, and how many could you know, be replaced uh, there's that movie that's coming out that's called The Creator, which I think is about AI. I actually look forward to watching that. The Creator. Yeah, yeah. It, it's When's that set come out? in. Uh, I think sometime later September, and it's okay. set in a further dystopian period. Um, and it's where like AI has like taken over a, a mm. good part of I don't know if it's the U.S. or the world. I forgot. But then there's like a, a battle between like humans and AI, advanced AI. So it's kind of like crazy. Uh, I won't get too much wow. into the weeds, but yeah, yeah. If you watch the trailer, it looks like it could be pretty good. Um, but yeah, uh, some of these movies are scary. Like even if you look at some old ones, I'm predicting stuff in the future, it, it, and not the fun stuff either. Like Back to the Future, like the hoverboards. Either it's it's always the bad and scary stuff. Yeah, no, it's no. I, I understand that. Like the future is definitely uh somewhat like scary because like with ai and whatnot you don't know how ai is going to be integrated yeah. in like future technology uh in in military um weapons and, and other things as well it's it's a little bit um it would make you nervous i would say but yeah i like to believe that humans have somewhat of a good grasp of staying in control of like ai yeah <laughs> making sure it doesn't get you know out of control i know um, um some of the like deleting the tech leaders in, in that field, um, even competitors kind of came together and said, made a pact like, hey, we're going way too fast. Let's slow down. Like, let's all agree, you know, and they all know each other, too. So I, I think they kind of, you know, stopped that just for a bit. Um, but yeah, I don't I don't know what, when they're going to keep moving forward with that and, and how much they are. Yeah, I guess we'll just have to see, right? Yeah, they. I know they used, um, and this is something cool, actually. They recently used a um, an AI program to um, uh, fully translate a, a cuneiform tablet, like a Sumerian tablet. Um, really? Yeah, those can take a long time to translate, even with um, uh, like people that are like extremely proficient in understanding that wow that's crazy i didn't hear about that I, i've i've tried learning a little cuneiform i can recognize like a few symbols and stuff and and some words but um uh the hardest part about that is it's not like you're just reading a book of an old language from like medieval times or something you're having to also determine like okay, what symbol is this? Like, it's so deteriorated that you can't really tell. And so I think the AI kind of plugs in like, well, it could be this or this symbol, but based on the symbols around it, this is what the sentence is. You know, this is what it could possibly be. So it kind of plugs in and plays, okay. plays out different sentences, so. Wow, that's fascinating. Yeah, it's <laughs> trippy. Yeah, yeah, it is. Good use at least. Yeah, no, definitely. Now, that's the more positive things we like. Yes, <laughs> yeah. I feel like we focus on the <laughs> negatives of it rather than the positives. Yeah, I feel like that too, but it's okay. I um, wanted to move a little bit about like your, you know, your work with your channel. Um, just discuss like the more like most rewarding thing so far about like, you know, you've been in this for how many, how long have you started this channel? I think uh, about a year or I started releasing around March or so something like that. I think it was March. Um, okay. uh, Cause I, <laughs> it's funny because I wanted to wait like another month and then I realized there were no like really good videos 
like no offense to anyone else. It was, I think they were just using like chat GPT and, and, uh, um, you know, AI voices, uh, which takes me off, um, is it's just lazy. They just want to pump out content. There's no soul or anything interesting behind it. But I, I had this video planned. It was made, I was just like starting to make lots of videos, um, and just have them ready off to the side, just in case I'm ever busy in the future, I can kind of chill and then release, you know, videos. And someone pumped out this crappy AI um, video on the uh, catch a beam. So I'm like, well, this is gaining traction. Oh, crap. Like, I thought I was going to be the first to have, like, a decent video on this. So I just put it out right away, like, a few days later. And then I'm like, I guess I'm live now. Um, but I had been working on this for at least a year. Um, and uh, since, I think, about April, I've been a part of Ancient Library. I was trying to get... Um, some of the videos, some more exposure um, and seeing, because Ancient Library has 1.6 million followers now. And I was trying to see if um, the uh, admin behind the page, the page owner would, you know, put some of those videos out there. Um, I offered to kind of help him out with videos and stuff. And uh, that was Ivan, who I'm going to introduce you to. And we connected very well, talking back and forth constantly. And then he added me as he's like, why don't you just be an editor on the page? And um, we started doing that, just talking every day. And then essentially uh, he brought me on as a co-owner and uh, he wanted to start doing a podcast on there. So uh, we uh, uh, recently did our first episode a few weeks ago with um, uh, Zahi Hawass, which we announced actually yesterday. That we're going to be releasing it in a few days and uh it got a very negative response <laughs> but uh, yeah he's he's yeah. not po he's very popular with some people and very unpopular with other um yeah. no in between whatsoever you either love him or hate him so um i got involved with ancient library um and that's kind of become like a huge piece in uh uh, what I do as well. And when Yvonne wanted me to do the podcast there, it was kind of like, okay, I, I'm putting my face out there. And then you and I connected and you were like, you know, come on my podcast. And I'm like, sure. And then now I'm thinking like, you know what? I might as well just voice it myself on the channel. You know, my face is out there. So, um, yeah, that that also played a huge contributing factor. Yeah, definitely. You've got a good voice. So yeah, definitely for future content. And you also, uh, I saw you got to over uh, a thousand subs, so that's pretty good. Yeah. Good it, YouTube is a very, very slow burn. Like, um, it's, it, it's, I've seen some people just take off to 20,000 within like, you know, a month or two. And it's like, how, um, but it all has to do with the algorithm. Um, I, I, realize i do better on tiktok i made a tiktok like a month ago and i already got twenty thousand subscribers um i guess people just like short form content now it's either short form content or really long podcasts i've noticed yeah okay hey that's awesome you got twenty thousand followers yeah 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 it's the only thing that sucks is there's no monetization on there but um, yeah. kind of leading to your question too, what's rewarding about it is like, I've had a lot of people on TikTok or, or TikTok say like, wow, I really love your videos. This is awesome. And, you know, kind of seeing that and like, I'm not making any money off TikTok and it's like, um, it just makes my day that people are learning something and it's fun and it's interesting to them. Um, I've had some people say like, Oh, that's great. You're not just doing a stupid dance or something like finally something good on TikTok, And like that made my day, too. That made me smile a lot, you know, that that people are learning and in a fun way. And that's this kind of like leads back to like what really got me into history was playing civilization. I was I was learning about different, you know, um, cities, different leaders, and it, it was a fun way to learn about it. That's awesome. Yeah. Um it's that feedback that you get from others that really uh make you want to keep going right like for yeah me anyway. yeah like the comments and yeah even if... sorry gonna say something oh no not at all oh, no sorry um 
even if it's like somewhat like critical, right? It's good to have that type yes. of feedback as well. And that just wants you, you know, wants you to continue to like get better. Right. And just like fix some like things that maybe some people have said. Um, but yeah, that positive feedback is always, it's always welcomed. <laughs> and, oh, um, yeah, definitely. Yeah. So that's great. Um, I have to find that game. It's called civilization, right? That's the one we were talking about where, um, uh, you can just kind of, if you want, you can set up like, uh, the real life world map and have like yeah. a true start location. So I'll, what I like to do, and I haven't been able to play it in a long time, but, uh, what I like doing um, was putting like uh, uh, starting off as um, the Inca and then like trying to take out the, the Mayans and the uh, um, Aztec and then just building up, taking out Cahokia, like the Cree up north in Canada and kind of like just having this huge like Roman Empire equivalent or larger actually in like the north and uh, uh, South America, American continents. So or like do another alternative history scenario where I'll just play as like um, Alexander the Great and take over India and then keep marching east to China. I don't know. It's just kind of fun, like to kill time. Like if you're tired or something late at night, like if I don't feel like reading a book or anything, you know, I'm, I'm really tired. Um, I just kind of turn off my brain and play that um, occasionally. And usually I never like doing the random generated maps i like doing like an alternate history scenario yeah that's cool yeah i love alternate history so yeah we, we, were, we were coming up with some ideas i remember that one time we were talking oh yeah yeah i think i remember that um you know that civilization game it kind of sounds familiar to the age of empires game as well that me and my friend play um, i have a little never bit. played that yeah it's uh it, i think it's more focused on like battles and like war like fighting yeah um, yeah not as building oriented more yeah, like yeah. building strategic yeah. but yeah, yeah both sound both i've fun. i've heard that's a really great game and i just i i haven't been able to um get into it i'm i'm trying not to get into any new games but uh, yeah. uh only other one i i really play is also kind of history game is assassin's creed more to just kind of like uh, take in the environments, like the the one in Greece, um, uh, the one in England where you're a Viking is all right. Um, uh, the new one, uh, it's eight sixty four Baghdad, I think. So like kind of like at the height. Um, I don't know. If that's not the height, but kind of like building up to the height of um, um, Saladin so um kind of like that whole islamic golden age so that's going to be really cool I'll, I'll probably play that whip out the xbox and explore ancient baghdad yeah, but cool. um yeah they they do a great job at those map designs too yeah a few of my friends that play it too they always just have positive things to say about it and never hear anything negative so um, the, the only negativity comes from like kind of the older fans that just want like, oh, why isn't this story connected to this? Oh, I just want the parkour. Like for me, it's just like I enjoy the historical setting and kind of like immersing myself into that world. Yeah, same here. I'm a big history nerd. A lot. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> same. Yeah, so. You and me both, brother. Yeah, definitely. Um, and I guess uh, moving on to the next like kind of final part about like your channel is uh like the most difficult thing w would you say uh maybe it'd be just i don't know trying to think because you have plenty of ideas and i love your content could it be like maybe time consuming perhaps or time consuming um, yeah like i have two scripts to knock out tonight and i kind of don't want to do them but you know i i enjoyed writing it i i, I actually i think my biggest struggle with them is like i'll be really into it like just pounding away i'll get 90 percent of it done and then it's like you need to add this in the middle and this and then it's just kind of like kind of a little too nitpicky and i want it to be like exactly right i want it to be engaging so it's kind of like that last 10 percent, that cherry on top that can sometimes get a little like 
that's like the worst part for me. And then um, yeah. just getting views, man. Like, it's like, come on, this could do like a lot better. I've, I've had some people say like, oh, this should be bigger. You know, like, why, why aren't you getting more views? And I don't know. YouTube's just fighting me. So what I would the algorithm. Yeah, that algorithm, the, the secrets to that, at least from what I've learned, is the algorithm and good thumbnails. <laughs> Unique thumbnails, I would say. Um, that's, that's my favorite part is I, I design all the thumbnails. I think there's only like two I didn't do. Oh, really? Oh, I you put the outside help. Yeah, I, I, make, okay. I make those goofy thumbnails. Yeah. Yeah, I like them. A couple are funny. <laughs> oh, they're hilarious. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, and, and and that that's the thing too, or like, um, a lot of I, I'm I'm not joshing them, but like a lot of uh, cause they're way smarter than me too, uh, but a lot of the archaeology related like uh, YouTube channels out there, um, have like more standard like good catchy thumbnails, more recognizable. You recognize the person on there, and it's like, hmm, how do I differentiate myself? And I'm like. No, I want to do something like really like goofy, like Mr. Beast styled, but then the content itself is like serious with some jokes and stuff in there. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be cool. I mean, Mr. Beast is, uh, oh my gosh, his, his videos are insane. Oh yeah. I know. He, I think the last one I saw, he did something like, like bought a plane or something and you'd have your hand on there. Whoever yeah. like had their hand on the longest got to keep it. Sounds like a Mr. Beast video. <laughs> yeah, it's um, like I, I'm I'm selling that. I, I <laughs> yeah, good luck affording all that gas for your own private jet. <laughs> right? That's what I'm saying. But yeah, going back to what you said, I, I could definitely see like what you mean in terms of like you know preparing the scripts and everything right for your videos yeah. and honestly i need to break make scripts because I don't, I don't really tell anyone this but like for all my videos that i put together i don't like have any i mean other than like podcast ones right yeah but like for example when i do my movie reviews or other like little short videos i've made that last like eight minutes i don't, I don't have any scripts i literally just go from my like my mind really it's crazy yeah seriously you, I'm, so I'm you sorry. wing that see i i am not good at winging winging stuff at all like um i'll just go on a tangent about something else. So I, I got to like hone in there a little bit. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, I, I get that. I mean, it's, I'm, I, that's great what you do. Like, yeah, just honing in and like creating like really detailed scripts and whatnot. It, it I think it keeps the mind like pretty focused as well. Yeah. For me, I don't know. I'm crazy. <laughs> um, oh no, you're not. Yeah. You, you've got it down, man. If you can wing that, like I can't even imagine what it'll be like if you do a script, but sometimes for some people, like that doesn't work at all. Sometimes they have to wing it. I, I guess it just depends on your type, but you could also do like a, uh, uh, just bullet point list and just so it's kind of like organized and then kind of like wing each bullet point. Yeah. Thank you for that. Yeah. Definitely. Bullet points would certainly help. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, and I, then, I don't uh, know how you do that, man. <laughs> yeah, well, they're not too long, I think. I think that's how I'm able yeah. to. I don't know. Like, I have like all everything set up, like uh, the Adobe like recording or something. So yeah, just keep it going. yeah. So that, that, that that's usually how I start my videos. But I don't know. I guess everything just kind of pops up on my mind, and I just keep on going. Um, but yeah, and then the final part was just like the most intriguing, like thing, or maybe like your your favorite like topic to cover on your channel, like a region perhaps, because like Ooh. I said, you cover a lot so is it like mesoamerica or is it like mesopotamia the ottoman empire i think you honestly i my wife makes one of me i go through phases like one day i'll be or like for one week or a month i'll just be like obsessed about sumerians probably mesopotamia i would say or okay. um yeah. kind of like the um ancient andean cultures um, those are the two I really gravitate towards. Um, but I'll one month, I'll just be like studying ancient India and just be obsessed with that. And I'll watch India travel videos too. And, and then, um, then I'll have like, maybe like a, um, uh, Anatolian phase where I'll be obsessed with like Gobekli Tepe and this, and like, um, just like the preceding uh cultures as well 
uh, so Ottomans and, and, and just there's so much history in, in that one little area right there. And it's like a bridge between Asia and Europe. And then I'll go on um, Greek binges as well, where I'll just like consume everything ancient Greece or um, Aztec as well. So it's like I can't really like tell you one because it depends on my depends on what phase I'm in. Yeah, so. sure. No. It's totally understandable. It's like a little like, boy who gravitates towards like dinosaurs and then trucks and yeah. Yeah. No, that's that's completely fair. Um tons of cultures, you know, they they all have, you know, their own unique, you know, history and whatnot. And I think if you asked me, I'd I'd probably say the same thing. Um, well not Mesopotamia, but you know, just not 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 certainly yeah. because there's so many interesting ones. Although, you know, Aztec history is very interesting to me i'd say mayan but um obviously you know mayan over aztec Ooh, you know the mayan civilization is quite unique because they kind of i'm not gonna say like disappeared but the, the when they reach like the threshold of their you know most pivotal moment in their history everything just kind of like just dissipated disappeared after that yeah. like they, tons of cities just were like emptied out like it's crazy um I, and i always like wonder like a lot of people have their own like conspiracy theories right yeah um if i were to think like maybe what could be the reason perhaps there were like civil struggles perhaps i, I think maybe maybe just yeah. like large agreements which eventually led to war um but that was there evidence explain. of war i know that there were rivalries between different like yes cities, different areas um i don't think it's like everyone decided hey libyan city sucks let's go live out in the wild yeah <laughs> um, yeah so i think that there is a reason um but what that reason could be maybe the rivalry yeah did get into like serious war warfare um and it was affecting like people living in urbanized areas um i think what makes the mayan like so distinct to me um, is that you know I, I read a book about Christopher Columbus uh, and one of his journals was uh, describing like people that he had encountered in Guatemala right and they had like serious like the clothes that they were wearing was like rivaled that of those in Europe right that just like yes, the text, yes. like how they're, they're just so unique yes. right where you know unfortunately a lot of people when they think of like Aztec you know um the aztec empire just natives in central south central america uh in videos and whatnot you always see them with like no clothes <laughs> yeah. like, you know, chest and everything right um i mean of course like in the caribbean islands that's well it's a different story like obviously it's somewhat way like, different true, yeah. but yeah. yeah yeah but um that just paints them in such a different like light right like a, a more unique way light different me. yeah right not like um, Apocalypto, which I which I do love that movie. Um, uh, I noticed that a lot of them are like not as clothed. I I think like that tribe in the beginning that might make more sense for because they were out in the wilderness. Um, but when they're brought to, I believe it's um, it was Mayan. It doesn't really doesn't really say, um, but I believe it was Mayan. Um, but yeah, at the end, I know the Spanish come, which I don't think that's very accurate. Um, but, um, yeah, like a lot of movies and like you said, pictures don't depict them, um, wearing clothes. Um, I, I've seen, uh, I saw it actually like a couple weeks ago. I wish I could pull it up. Um. It was uh, Montezuma um, before he was um, allegedly stoned to death by his own people for supposedly betraying them. Um, but he was like decked out, full on drip, like amazing. Like, um, and you don't really see that depiction much. I mean, this guy had this guy had a crib up in uh, I, I've seen it. It was in uh, um, not New Mexico, Arizona. And it's like, holy crap, he had like a second house. Like, it's like way up in the cliffs, too, just like carved in there. Um, yeah. Wow. Montezuma's Palace. Yeah. And uh, 
you you really don't see that side as much. Yeah. Yeah. Here we go. Montezuma was living like that plush life, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, they don't, unfortunately. Like, it go back to just having this sort of, like, um, bias, you know, not bias, but, like, this discriminatory view towards, like, natives that, that goes back to, like, you know, centuries of kind of viewing native peoples with an inferior inferior lens. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Unfortunately. Um, of course, times are changing a little bit, and people are kind of understanding that's that not every, like, you know, natives weren't. Not all of them are like primitive. Um, oh yeah, a lot were, yeah. Lived in, were living in advanced societies, um, and there's uh, tons of evidence, obviously, to prove that as well. Um, so I think that still, though, we see like videos and movies that do depict like natives as like you know primitive savages, unfortunately. Um, yeah. But I, I think times are changing. Yeah, thankfully. Um, I mean, yeah, you look right? at some sites like, uh, 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 I'm going to pronounce it wrong, Puma Punku, um, and just like how that was just the stone masonry there. It's so precise, and some of the blocks there are just huge. It's like they just carve into it. Did they haul it? Did that? Like, how did they do that? And it's like a lot of people will go, oh, aliens. It's like, no, or oh, they were like advanced Atlanteans that had like power tools. and No, I think there was different methodologies, but, you know, um, there's there's definitely some different advanced methodologies they knew about. And it doesn't have to be anything like, it could be something very basic that you could do with a few tools and stuff that our thinking process doesn't really hasn't really tried to tackle. Yeah, you make a good point. Like people always like to like come up with like reasons for this sort of uh, unfamiliar advancement of, of you yeah. know, people in the Americas, right? And they'll like say, oh, it's it's aliens or did the Chinese or some other like civilization <laughs> get here, right? <laughs> the, there actually oh. is, uh, um, I actually might do a video on it, uh, like, an alleged record of the Chinese reaching the Americas before the Vikings even did. Um, uh, uh, I think it's like the Fusang legend or something like that. And like, it kind of had to do in, uh, to do with uh, Quetzalcoatl. Like some people think, I, I don't really think it happened, but um, Quetzalcoatl, the uh, uh, feathered serpent God. So apparently some of their ships kind of had like that, those, like dragon carvings on the front of the boat and so some people say like quetzalcoatl came in on a um riding a, a dragon so um some people say that again I, I i don't think so um uh that it was the chinese but there's this whole story about how they in chinese records how they reached a foreign land and encountered these people and that there was um uh a huge amount of jade present there as well oh jade okay and i think this is like oh. 1300s i might be wrong but it, it was no pro no before 1300s i think because that would have been after the um viking sagas but yeah it, it it's an interesting story i'm gonna i'm gonna do a lot more research on it before making a video yeah thanks for sharing that yeah definitely i mean i know the chinese in the historic times they had somewhat of an isolated society i mean they did make it to africa like i think during yes. the Ming dynasty because they had like giraffes and whatnot um they brought yeah. back to china um i'm not sure how far their boats made it out east uh obviously they got to japan and perhaps they got to some polynesian islands but they didn't even get to australia i don't think and if they did then it was like small boats because i believe that or maybe China, the Chinese did know about Australia. I, I, I know that. think so. I know there was um, there was Aboriginal rock art discovered, and I don't think it was dated at all. But it uh, showed I forgot what type of boat it's called. Um, some of those boats, it might they might have been like Indonesian though. So um, I 
1400s I, I i couldn't tell you i don't really want to even say because i don't want to sure. put out misinformation but it's um i know that rock art kind of gave some people an idea like that people had been to australia or i don't want to say discovered but like other people people other than aboriginal people um reached there first yeah yeah i think that um you know i Maybe it's kind of silly for me to say. I mean, if the Chinese got to Indonesia, certainly some, like maybe some sailors did get to Australia. Um, but I don't think during that time, like expansion and, and colonization uh, was not like on the, the government's minds uh, uh, in China back then, right? Yeah. Because, yeah, so perhaps, well, yeah. It stopped abruptly. Like um, you were talking about like Africa, Um they were going around the horn, everything. And um, I think it just abruptly stopped. Uh, they had like massive ships that would have dwarfed the uh, uh, Portuguese ships. And I think they the Portuguese missed it by like, I don't know, like 50 years, give or take a few decades. Um, Might have even been slimmer margin than that, but... Um, had the Portuguese arrived there sooner, they would have encountered the Chinese and their ships would have been like dwarfed in comparison to the Chinese ones as well. But yeah, I think one of the emperors just abruptly said, no, we're done. Yeah, I think that's it, which is unfortunate. But... Yeah. There's another alternate history piece there. What if, what if they kept trading? Like, what would the world have looked like? Would they have like continued, you know, they have set up colonies in Africa way before the British. Would they have colonized the Americas before? What would that look like? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Now, I know that some of the dynasties, uh, when they did go on some territorial expansions uh, up north, there were some, I think, artifacts, Chinese artifacts in Siberia. Uh, I know that they had like uh, Outer Mongolia, uh, which was a part of China at one point time which is like where vladivostok is in, in far east russia and then they got like wars and whatnot and territorial loss um but i'm not sure how far like these artifacts were i think there were some near like near mongolia well past mongolia like have you heard of like lake bikal um it sounds familiar i can't say i have it, but it, i I, like, I think i've heard of it it's okay I, I think it's the world's largest freshwater lake um there were Chinese artifacts up there, but like it's not like that far up north in Siberia. Uh, I think what I'm trying to get to is you have to wonder like how far maybe the Chinese did truly get to in Siberia if they even got to like uh, you know near the Bering Strait, perhaps. I don't know because Siberia is hard to uh, you know navigate through <laughs> during those times, like during the 1400s and 1300s. Would you um, say those that? across the Bering Strait, they were more Asiatic, weren't they? Oh, <laughs> Isn't yeah. that a consent consensus? I know there's like a lot of a lot of people like to stick with the theory that you know there is a Bering Strait bridge, right? Yeah. And that like a lot of Asiatic people uh perhaps crossed over, you know, from Siberia and then ended up in like Canada, um Alaska and the rest of the Americas. Um my belief on that is sure it seems like fairly credible uh but i think maybe i still want to wait and see uh right I, yeah well I certainly know. I, sorry go ahead oh you're good I, I was just gonna say obviously there are like very like similar comparisons between like people of, of alaska right and those from Siberia. The, the inuits yeah 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 but were you gonna say they um there's a lot of stuff out there with um like a lot of kind of the polynesians making it over and i know we're going to talk about easter island a bit and then there's this whole theory again i don't believe this i find it interesting and want to learn as much as possible whenever i see news sources on it like um uh Mu, the lost continent. There's uh, Lemuria. I might be mixing them up. One supposedly kind of by um, Africa and India, a sunken continent. And then one is supposedly by uh, um, 
kind of like in between um, Asia and North America. And there's a sunken site kind of off the coast of Japan that is thought to be like the edge of this continent, sunken continent. Really? Um, and it's apparently a pyramid structure. It looks very well cut. And people say it's nature. I don't, I don't know. I, I would like to see it be studied more, which is sad because no one really wants to study these sites, but um, people just rule it out. Nope. Nope. And then people say like, yes, it's definitely a pyramid from a long lost civilization. It's like, it could be either. Let's let's keep it open though. Let's not close it. So this pyramid is supposedly the edge of the this sunken continent, and um, it's connected to uh, Nan Madol, uh, which is this really crazy island. It's trippy. So they like just the way they built it, and it's like ancient. Like just there's these massive blocks there. It's like, how the heck did they get this on this island? And like some of it's apparently like artificial and no one really knows. And it, it makes me wonder, and, and kind of some of the architecture seems similar to the stuff you see on Easter Island. So it's like, was this all connected? And I know the Polynesians were like great seafarers. Um, Hawaii was apparently a part of it too. Um, and I even did a video covering something they found um, outside of Hawaii. Uh, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to butcher this, uh, Puma Pud, I, I'm not even going to try, but it's, it's like a 20 letter word. <laughs> um, and it's like a yellow brick road found under one water. And like the archeologist that saw it, um, said like, oh, it leads to Atlantis, which is obviously a joke, but, um, they said it was natural and done by volcanoes, which that could be, but it's like, why doesn't someone go down there and, and study it more, you know, like really look around. Um, cause there's, again, I don't know if I believe in this long lost continent. There hasn't been enough evidence to prove that yet. I don't like ruling it out though. And I don't like when people say like, it's definitely not, it's disproven. It's not, you know, um, it doesn't even have to be a continent, but there, there's a lot of advanced stuff around, um, you know, just all those Pacific islands that, Frankly, I think we need to look more into and give a lot more attention to. Um, and, and that's kind of one of the things that like drives me, you know, like I want to bring more attention to that. I want people looking into that. I want smarter people than me to want to look into that more and, and you know, see what they can come up with. Yeah, definitely. You brought up some really great points and for sure, like there needs to be more. Um, I don't know, I would say more, more expeditions out into the Pacific, you know, um, because I Absolutely. think there's a lot that is not really you know, told um, in terms of like the history of like these islands and, how, you know, exactly how, you know, Polynesian people, you know, got to, you know, uh, the, the colonized uh, Fiji. Maybe not Fiji, um, like Hawaii, right? And then got I like to colonized everything. <laughs> yeah, all those islands, right? Yeah, it's, yeah. it's just insane. Um, uh, I took out Fiji because I don't know if like the Polynesian population is a majority on Fiji or not. I know there's like Aboriginal people as well. So, yeah, I know like yeah, New Zealand has has that too. Um, yeah, I actually, don't know if there's Aboriginal people there. I know they're uh, um, the, what it. It would be considered Maori, I believe. Um, yeah, I view the Jango Fett is from there. That's that's how I, I remember that from Star Wars. Uh, I forgot that Tamora Morrison. He's a really cool actor, um, and uh, they say he brought that kind of like warrior energy um, to the the role in Star Wars. Um, but uh, yeah, I think yeah, it's mostly Polynesian, I believe. And then uh, if you go like a little. Um, uh, north uh, um, west of there, you have um, what was that whole Sundaland area. And so that used to be like Malaysia and Indonesia used to be connected to um, Southeast Asia. So they think like when the sea level rose and there was like that alleged great flood that um, uh, connects and you see that story everywhere throughout the world but the sea level rose 
and it kind of separated um, those people in Indonesia and Malaysia and the surrounding islands from Southeast Asia. Wow. And that that's an area I would really like to see like explored much more. Um, because you have sites like, uh, what's it called? Um, Ganung Padang there. And that's a very controversial site and unfortunately not talked about. Um, it's like this massive ancient pyramid that's supposedly like 10, 20,000 years older than the Great Pyramid of Giza. Um, and uh, you'll get shot for saying that in like <laughs> any uh, uh, like a academic setting. But um, again, do I believe that? You know, I'm, I'm open to that. There's a lot of compelling evidence. I, I, I hate ruling stuff off the table. Um, and there's a guy named uh, Danny Hillman, not a not a Wajaja. Sorry if I butchered that. Um, and he studied archaeology at University of California, or I think UCLA somewhere in California. Um, he did a lot of tests. Um, uh, forgot the name of the test. Um, he did this. So he did this one test where they like kind of drilled in there and looked, and there's like layers of pyramids. And like, so it was like built around a, a cave, I believe. And they kind of built like a small pyramid about around that, like 20,000 years ago. And then allegedly, and then another like 10, 15,000, and then one 5,000 years ago above that. And it's a really fascinating site. One of my favorites actually. But um, I would love to see like the uh, surrounding area that like that um, the sea level rose above like if there's any sites down around there yeah i would too that sounds yeah extremely interesting i didn't even know about <laughs> half of what you said I'll, I'll send it to you after it's, it's really cool yeah. i did a video on it too gunung padang um but yeah there's that whole like I, i'm really fascinated and apparently some of the polynesians came from southeast asia um kind of colonized some of those islands thousands of years ago. And um, some allegedly, I don't know if I believe this, there hasn't been enough evidence, but reached uh, South America. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, I know that there was talks of like, you know, Easter Island, right? Yes. I guess the, the Polynesian population was there um, or had reached there. I'll have to double check, make sure I know what I'm saying. Um, but I, I did hear that some Polynesians did get to Ecuador. Perhaps. Yeah. Yeah, which is crazy, right? Because there was chickens. There was yes. An article read, yeah. Yes. And there, there's an article that I read that there were some tamales that had like chicken meat in them. Um, and that's how... How did those? How did the chicken meat get into wow. these indigenous foods? Right. Um, so yeah, um, it, it very well could not have been the Europeans that brought chickens. It was Polynesians. Yeah. No. Oh. I. I. Yeah. That's. An, I, I kind of forgot about that. That is a compelling piece. Um, that kind of reminds me a little off track. So, as we're talking about like, in, I, I can think of other examples of like someone. Um, saying that a Rome, the Romans reached there, which, um, cause there's a Roman artifact found in uh, Mesoamerica, but some people think it was like a ship that drifted there and, you know, it was carbon dated and found to be like of Roman origin. Um, but there's like all these stories of different people reaching around there. Um, one of them that is really controversial is kind of like the, um, if you look at, the Olmecs, like people look at, you know, those giant, massive head statues. And um, s some people said they were Africans. And have you ever seen that debate online a lot? Yeah, yeah, I have. I, I, yeah. I've definitely like had my friends get into it with like people that believe that you know, they were like possibly like africans I, I know like columbus had or was it columbus or some conquistador had made like a journal saying that he said like really like he saw like dark like black skin people in the uh i think mesoamerica 
but I think like the interpretation of what black is right could also yeah. just be like really dark looking like yes people right because if you go to, I, i've been to guatemala before and I, I i saw like people that were pretty they were pretty like dark you know skin complexion oh yeah like, guatemala. um so i think that's They're not like of african origin either yeah 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 no, have, no, not of african or the, origin. the features have like like see a lot of these um like omex may have been a lot darker yeah. and had you know more features that align with that of Mayans, though they may have been lighter, and more fair skinned, you know? Yeah. Have you seen videos of that before? Like I've seen like fights and like online wars. about. Yes. <laughs> I, we yeah. get a lot of those on, um, ancient library, um, a lot too. And then like people arguing in the comments, <laughs> I actually found out, um, some of the posts that go viral are the Olmec posts because people just, comment share and then the comments lead to arguments so i kind of kind of tried to even though they would go viral easily like i i don't care about that you know i i would rather kind of like not post as much about that just because we've had to ban people for just being toxic you know a lot of racist comments and stuff so um and then you know um a, a lot of the countries there in Central America get really upset about that too, um, and feel like it's it's an attack on you know their cultural identity as well. Um, uh, so yeah, I, I I do see a lot of that. Um, uh, it's almost as bad as the whole. Uh, it's a new new thing. Past two years has been talked about, but uh, especially this year, it's really picked up steam. Is that whole Tataria thing? Um, we could talk about that for a long time, but maybe that that's, that's a, a conversation for another episode another or video. something. Sure. Yeah. 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 Cause I, I could go on that for an hour. Like <laughs> I'll, I'll touch the bare basics is like, uh, sure. essentially there's all these missing, like there's maps found that say Tataria and it shows kind of like Northwestern, uh, or northeastern Asia, and it says Tataria on there, and um, they think it's like kind of like Mongol, uh, uh, Russia, Russian hybrid, like an empire that was there, and that they built like all these old buildings and colonized America way before, like you know, the British arrived, and that pretty much the government is covering this up, which you know, I, I've seen them bring up. Com compelling evidence uh oh my light went out oh well um i've seen them uh uh bring up compelling evidence but it you know the the whole theory is you know it needs more work you know if they really want to make it truly compelling you know i and and i i don't like shunning them either um uh i i because i'll i'll actually listen i, I just want to hear what they have to say i think that's kind of a problem in you know this field of history and archaeology is that people don't other, let other people talk. They, they can get really pompous and stuff. So, um, you know, um, if they want to keep pumping out content on that, I'm, I'm not going to be rude or disrespectful. I'll, I'll listen, even if I disagree. Yeah, sure. That, that's great that you said that. Um, and yeah, thanks for sharing that about yet yeah, to Tataria. They, yeah, they, they said there was a big mud flood. Yeah. Um, Tataria. Yeah. And then that's why you see like all these old buildings, um like kind of sunken underground there's there's actually some articles in st louis about these buildings in um uh that are like underground like really deep um and like they're really old and, and stuff and um i don't know if i necessarily like you know buy into the whole theory but i do find that interesting and that is one point they bring up that it's like hmm, why aren't we talking about this what is this so you know i'll listen I don't I don't think there was an empire in northeastern Asia that um colonized America. Um Tataria though was supposedly what like a lot of map ma makers would name that general region too cuz a lot of it kind of was empty too. So um that kind of explains why that's on maps. Yeah. Yeah, that would explain. Yeah, I I don't think I I'm on board with you. 
Yeah. Um, but I also hey, don't think. I'll listen. I'll I'll listen to it. I'll hear what they have to say. I think yeah. That's the problem nowadays is people don't want to listen to other people's opinions and why they think what they think. Yeah, definitely. But I think people are slowly changing and trying to yeah. open their minds. Yeah. Um, but I think I think we were talking about like Easter Island, right? It is like certainly crazy how the heck they like brought those statues onto that like island. And in, in my mind, it's quite yeah, you know, fascinating. The fact that like because I I've seen like pictures like they look so heavy, right? Like it doesn't look like they could be brought on simple like boats, right? Um, and like the Polynesian people were known as like seafaring, so where the where the heck those statues like yeah definitely come from it's <coughs> and not really like history. not really like builders more just like experts of you know like as, astronomy too you know because with mm -hmm. navigation you know that's that's something you have to like um really know and and, and rely on the stars for um navigating the ocean um so maybe the question is i guess we could gear it more towards like not really like looking at them from like a building angle and like but more at like how do i put this like their navigational skills like did they have bigger boats to haul that you know like because they were they were they were great seafarers so um, maybe they they had bigger boats like massive wraps or something i i'm just kind of throwing that out there i haven't really looked too much into that but um uh, I, I don't think we've really seen evidence of that but that'd be uh interesting if we ever found something that could prove that yeah so with you know easter island and everything uh it is quite interesting and i think that there's there's so many like mysteries of like south america right uh and i think we had talked about earlier about how there's like a lot of you know structures in like the amazons right that that really haven't even been discovered i mean who knows just how much of the amazon rainforest has truly like been discovered by like um mankind so i mean of course like there's indigenous people there uh but there are you know a lot of like areas in the rainforest that aren't like inhabited at all right um yeah, and I, I know the mainstream understanding is like that it's, that, you know, we really look at, you know, the Western part of South America um, as being, you know, this really um, more advanced part of the continent as far as the ancient world there goes. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. but no one really looks at Brazil, and I think that narrative is, you know, kind of changing because, you know, uh, one of the oldest pyramids in the world is actually located in Brazil. And there is believed to be, you know, over a thousand pyramids there. That's like, why is that another thing really not talked about? And it's starting to be, you know, a conversation and uh, kind of changing the narrative a little bit too. So I, I would really like to see like how that plays out in the next couple of decades as well. But um, I'm sure a lot of, a lot of stuff is is hidden in the amazonian rainforest we just we just think like when you know all these ancient cities were in peru that there's just a bunch of tribes in um the amazon but really you know what grew over that you see you see how fast stuff grows there it's 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 crazy that's that's like that movie, um, the, the closest real life thing to that movie, uh, Annihilation, where the wilderness is just like all alive, alive there, you know, it's, it's beautiful and, 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 and scary at the same time. Yeah, I haven't seen that movie yet. Um, I'll just check that out. You'd like it. You'd like it. Yeah. It, it shows how like, you know, destructive and, and dangerous that how nature can be, you know um and, and a little creepy at times but still beautiful yeah yeah thanks for uh sharing that i will check that movie out i am sure i would like yeah. it um yeah there, there's just you know like we said just so many like unknowns about south america and i watched a documentary on how there's like these archaeologists and like others that were trying to um find these like 
hidden like pyramids you know that were buried um you know under just all the these trees and whatnot and um uh, in the amazon rainforest and again that's that's something that's like not talked about uh because it seems that the general view of you know indigenous people in the amazons unfortunately is it's always like they're seen as like primitive and like living out um just in the middle of nowhere in the, in the forest but that's it's i believe it's not the case um i think there's a lot more even and the I primitive think, the more primitive tribes the ones that we see that even still exist today they're way smarter than us in a whole nother level like if if we're to be wiped out today by a great catastrophe and like you know five percent of the world remains that five percent would probably die out whereas like that tribe will just still keep living on they know how to live off the land and stuff so um yeah you know, they're they're even smarter than us in, in many regards like whereas like yeah. we just turn on computers and stuff and, and use our phones yeah definitely right like the average american at least yeah, as far as i know couldn't would not be able to survive too long <laughs> yeah if we were like given that much uh in put us in like the amazon rainforest right yeah uh, um so yeah that, that that shows you how advanced you know people are there um, yeah and in, so. in a diff different way of you know being advanced like in, in some way you can argue we're, we're dumber you know <laughs> um <laughs> we just know how to like use appliances very well yeah um, right but yeah I, I think there's <laughs> yeah chat gpt but I, yeah. I i really do think you know there there could have been and not to get into that whole like uh alternate history sphere too much uh, that some people don't like but like an advanced civilization and i i, I don't like using that term because the connotation on there is like oh they had flying cars and it's atlantean and, and stuff like that no like advanced can just mean like you know maybe they they there was the means to build stuff like gobekli tepe like that that shocked a lot of people no one no one thought that was around especially for that time period the time frame it was built within like that's very impressive and we still don't have many answers for that you know so um you know there's there's secrets there we we really haven't searched it that much yeah definitely i agree with you we really have not and we've only like what to put our like uh to put that more into like a realistic uh view is that like take for example the ocean right we've only explored like what 10 percent of the ocean it's so, even five i think it's like yeah i oh yeah, i believe that five like so mankind has so much more so much like work to do in terms of like understanding this planet and our history yeah i think what what what's going on like in peru right now like I, i'd made a community post about how these villagers in the amazon uh in in peru uh, were attacked by like these beings that were described as like being seven or eight feet tall and were like uh look goblin like an appearance right and um when fired at by these villagers you know with guns and bullets uh it didn't like affect them at all i think that whatever these like things are um is also kind of another connection to the you know unknown in, in south america because when the government the peruvian government made statements saying that like these beans are actually just gold miners with jet packs and yeah. probably wearing like armor or like vest um gun proof vest i no i don't buy that that's almost insulting i don't either i think to to the villagers these indigenous villagers because that's basically saying that these villagers don't know what miners are don't know who miners right are, they look exactly at, right and that almost it's so ridiculous that it seems like it's a like a, a cry for help because how ridiculous the statement sounds and what i mean by like saying like oh maybe i if i say something so crazy they'll know that there actually is a problem and i think that by saying that they're seven foot miners in yeah. peru on, on jet packs and there's uh, there's so many ways i could go about debunking that and recently a video came out of these villagers saying that there was no authorities there that made like these statements or talked to the villagers about this so you know i'm, I'm going to go with the villagers i'm going to go with the indigenous villagers and the amazons and, and believe their word um that 
what they're saying is the truth. Um, now, to go about what the heck these things are, um, could they be government related? Maybe. Could they be aliens or, as they say, what interdimensional beings? Uh, perhaps as well. You know, no one really knows. Even the villagers um, are un uncertain. Um, now, what type of connection could these things maybe have towards like other unknowns in South America as well, right? Even like uh, structures in, in the Amazon rainforest, uh, advanced, you know, structures, who knows? Um, not that I'm saying that all structures that are hidden are, are from like aliens or anything. I like, I know the indigenous people, right. Didn't make a lot of them, but um, there could be some that, that are, haven't been found yet that, could be in relation to what's going on right now. I'm curious what will like be the end game of this. Like, will these things like kind of like disappear or, or what? Because again, like I'm following this case and I think just a few days ago, uh, yeah, these vill the villagers made that statement saying that no one came out and said that these were like gold miners. Like there was no authorities that came yeah. out there. And said, yeah, that's a scary, like crazy thing. That's right. That's, that's really weird. And, and, like you said, I, th I think that is insulting too. Um, and like, seriously, seven foot creatures, like what are they doing? Like a getting a bunch of Shaquille O'Neal's to like <laughs> mine gold down there and, and, and wear jetpacks. You know, yeah. <laughs> it's, um, and like you said, I think it's either alien or government related. I'm, I lean heavily towards maybe some, some sort of governmental experiment or something. There's some wild stuff. If you look into that one three letter agency, everyone knows what I'm talking about. Um, begins with a C. Uh, uh, some crazy stuff. Um, and uh, like, look at Project Blue Beam, for instance. Could this be Project Blue Beam uh, being enacted? Maybe. Um, uh, so that like fake alien invasion um, thing. Maybe they're testing that out on villagers or something to see how realistic, see the reactions and stuff. Um, but yeah, if you look up Project Bluebeam, it's an, an actual uh, document uh, of something they they uh, want to enact. I know they deny it and say like, oh, is this something we looked at? Um, it just kind of helps with passing certain laws. I mean, just look at 9-11. Um, you're able to pass the Patriot Act through there. Um, and, and just different laws throughout catastrophe can be passed. So like um, they a lot of people speculate that that's what project blue beam that's what the end goal of it is is to get some certain laws enacted um that kind of take away some freedom so could they be testing it out there maybe i know the u.s is really losing their grip on uh uh south america so um you know to china um i, I believe russia a bit too so um could they be doing something with that could that tie into there as well maybe so um, I, I definitely do think it is government related, but uh, I don't rule out the possibilities of it being extraterrestrial at all, especially with the fact that they're describing them as creatures, you know? Yeah, definitely. And I, I think one thing to add on to that is that like this village, I don't know if you've heard the city called Iquitos, but it's a city that's in like the northwestern part of Peru. Yeah, northwest part, which is in the Amazons. And yeah. this village where this happened, it takes about, it's like a 10 hour boat ride to get to this village, right? Jeez. So if it is government related, you have to wonder like how the heck did the government, it, rather if it's Peruvian or, or US, how did they get all the way there? I mean, well, I guess on like where, where is their base at is what I'm trying to like get to is like, where the heck, where are they able to go to get there? And why would they be in that specific yeah. spot where they could yeah. be close to like a big city? Huh? That's, that's, what's really weird. Um, yeah. Do they have a dumb there? Uh, you know, like deep underground military base. Like, could that be it? Maybe like, yeah, something because that would be a perfect place. It's like, you know, in the Amazon, it's, it's very hidden. Not many people are going to go around there. Oh, it's right by villagers. Anything we can do, we can just say they're crazy villagers or something like that. So, yeah, that's what I think could like 
could be, you know, what's going on there. Um, sure. And, and, you know, the villagers are actually seeing this and, you know, there's some weird stuff. Um, and, and they're just kind of playing on that whole like villager card, like, Oh, they're crazy. So, yeah. um, it'd be weird that aliens would just randomly be there of all places. Yeah. You have to wonder that too. Like, why would, if there's like, you know, this advanced civilization of a beans, why the heck would they be in the middle of the Amazon forest? I was saying um, base there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but yeah, some some videos I've seen have said, well, maybe they've been here this whole time or for a long time. So right, who knows? Um, but yeah, it's definitely a very like strange case. It's a strange time. They, I think this has been going on for like two months now. So yeah. Um, yeah, so I, I want to see how it unfolds too. Like, yeah, how it, like, and there was that there was that thing in uh, uh, Las Vegas too a few months ago. And yeah, like, that meme where uh, I sent you where with the with the alien and it's like um, with that guy the the Doomer meme. He's just like the aliens. Like, aren't you surprised to see me? And he's just like smoking a cigarette and like. Yeah, I got a lot going on in my mind right now, and it's like most people don't really care. And there's all this weird stuff happening, um, the the UFO hearings and stuff like that too. So is that a part of Blue Beam as well? Like you, you know what what's what's going on? So yeah, definitely a lot of string strange things going on this year. Uh, the Las Vegas thing I think is also odd when you think of the thing that's going on per, in Peru because of the descriptions of both of the whatever these people in las vegas saw i didn't actually like catch the full story but as far as i understand they, they saw beans as well that were like seven or eight foot tall too uh, which is Jeez. the same yeah descriptions of what's going on in peru um so yeah and then like with the ufos right you've got like the whole like what's that guy that david grush guy who's like been on um trial or not trial but he, he's uh talking with some politicians and, and discussing yeah it. yeah some things that he's seen but also uh when that chinese like weather balloon was shot down there was like i think three cases of other three other like unidentified objects yes that were like seen as well right like there was Lake one Michigan. over like yeah like Huron, i think okay yeah. yeah and that was never disclosed what the heck that was <laughs> so um I mean, sure, it's, it could be like probably like government related, maybe from Russia or China, but they didn't yeah. say. Or us. One, <laughs> yeah, or us, right? They said that there was like no signs of propulsion. So that's like insane, right? That's yeah, probably that whole like, you know, we've talked about this before, that whole um, thing that, uh, what's his name? Bob Lazar talked about where he uh, said essentially, it's like um grab a piece of paper or something it's just like space time so i'm probably explaining this wrong i'm not very well versed in quantum physics okay. um say i'm trying i am right here where my finger is i'm in a, my little flying saucer and i'm trying to get to this end right here and say it's like a few miles apart like if you can physically bend the space-time continuum, see, like it's like I'm there right away. So something kind of like that. So something like way above our comprehension. I I might have explained that wrong, but um, that's what I've gathered, kind of, or that's at least how I think I understand it from, you know, different stuff I've read on it. So. Um, yeah, that's that's probably why you see them just like bounce everywhere. Yeah, that's nuts. Zip. I'll have to watch that. How he describes yeah. it. Uh, um, I'm trying to think who did. There's several scientists and quantum physicists out there who have like really gone into depth and and tried to explain it in probably a better way than I did. Yeah, no, I mean you did okay explaining. Yeah, um, it was fine. But, I hope so. Yeah, no, you did. <laughs> but yeah, just uh, just crazy stuff going on this year, certainly. Um, so I also would like to see what the end will be 
about that case. Um, but yeah, moving on, I think, uh, to talk on a more lighter subject, <laughs> like just talking about like travel discussion and whatnot. Now you said you've been to Turkey. Yes. Yeah. That is one of the coolest countries I've ever seen, but there's so many others I want to explore and, 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 you know, as far as where I've been, like, that was pretty darn cool. Istanbul is a beautiful city. So much history there. You know, Greek, Byzantine, you know, Ottoman, uh, you know, you got more modern Turkish history there, um, Roman, and then like just everywhere else in Anatolia. And I haven't even really explored around there. I, I have a friend who has like, you have like, go back with Tepe, you had Hittites there, like, you know, the first like major like civilization there um, in Hattusha. Yeah. Um, but then you have like all these uh, um, old cities. I forgot Corral something. I think it's Corral. No, no, that's Peru. Um, it begins with a C. I forgot its name, but it it's it's like one of the oldest towns in that area. And, and even like relative to like Jericho and stuff, it's it's might be the same age, I think. I'm, I'm mixing my dates up, but there's just so much in Anatolia. Um, and you have like Darren Kuyu, that whole underground city there. I've, I haven't seen that, but um, Turkey is like something, a place I spent like probably like a good week and a half at, and it was not enough time. Yeah, that's awesome. You got to go there. I always hear about like crazy like you know historic like buildings and architecture and everything they're just a the culture in general and turkey is just oh amazing. yeah yeah there's a lot there yeah um yeah i'll have to check out that country one day i know like maybe you see some videos that i post sometimes on, on youtube uh, you, about, like travels and you have to... like the coolest stuff i, I i'm jealous <laughs> that it's oh. you get to go to like so like tell me about like Vietnam that looked just fascinating and that must have been a culture culture shock for you just like absolute culture shock yeah thank you yeah Vietnam um definitely was a bit of a culture shock in terms of just like the, the life there you know many people uh do have like motorcycles like if you like go across roads and everything it's not even like you hardly see cars that much it's like everyone's on, on some motorcycle yes. or some bike right what are those um, things called the like the little boxes, they're like on motorcycles. They're like jipneys. Yeah, did you cool. ride one of those? I did not, one but I did ride one in the Philippines. Yes, there's a ton there too. Yeah. Yeah, they're so small. Like I remember, I had like gotten in one, but that that's like made for like people that are like five foot or yeah, not 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 a below six foot. So for me, yeah. like I'm about like six two, six three, and like I could not fit into the. I, I went into yeah. one of those like once. I was like squeezed in. Like I was like, oh gosh, yeah, I can't like hunched over and yeah, yeah right. <laughs> yeah, but it was it was a learning experience. Yeah, certainly I think if I would have went to Vietnam first before any other country in Asia, it would have been a, an even larger like culture shock. Um, but you know, I was lucky enough to go into the country um as well. You know, I, I got to ride on a motorcycle and just see the you know, the countryside and kind of just you know, make you wonder just how people are you know thrive and you know this really like different like unique like life um because just the rural side of vietnam is like nothing i i think in terms of like what is described in like movies and whatnot right it just is so beautiful you know um you have to like go out there and see it yourself uh you know the roads the houses as well like uh a lot of like people in vietnam like the houses that i saw are actually quite big um it's really interesting how how the architecture is in, in vietnam as well um how houses are made um and the country itself is advancing um a lot of like foreign countries Very are, much are, so. are investing yeah into vietnam uh especially in, in um you know, industrial like production um there's a lot of people that work in factories and whatnot um so the country's economy is able to really advance within a very short period of time um the city ho chi Minh, um it's the capital and that's a really unique city. I would say that's one of my favorite cities I've been to, just in terms of like the the, uh, the food, obviously. But oh my um, goodness, the food looks like phenomenal, like out of the park, just like amazing. 
yeah yeah it, it really is and um it's like extremely cheap you know too like it's only like you could find like a banh mi which is like a sandwich only for like a dollar or two and that's how like you know more affordable it is in vietnam that's um, crazy yeah yeah oh i so wish it, yeah definitely i i would highly recommend you know visiting there um I, I want to make a list of like countries that I've visited and like my top 10 like favorite. So one day I will do that and like maybe put it into like a YouTube video or something. Yeah. Sometime. Yeah. My yeah. top 10 favorite. Yeah. And yeah. Then, something yeah. Like put in the footage of you, you there. Yeah, definitely. Of course. Um, although I might, might be a spoiler. Peru could be number one, not being biased or anything. Cause I was born there, but that, no that's way. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe Peru, but We'll see. Yeah, uh, I was, I was, I was supposed to go there. My, uh, my buddy and I were, and uh, all our friends make fun of us for it. I'm like, so how was that trip to Peru? It was like during COVID, and and uh, somehow I don't know how I accidentally like I was looking at flights for something, and I accidentally pressed Lima, and I saw flights were like one hundred and seventy two dollars round trip or something like that and i'm like oh my god and i i call my buddy i'm like hey dude do you want to go to peru like in a couple months and he's like um sure and then we like made this whole like itinerary like just planned everything out and uh uh we uh show up to the airport we're like about to board the plane and this is like January 20, January 21. Um, so it's still kind of like COVID. And I think that's why a lot of flights were, were cheaper. And we had like the whole trip down to like spending no more than like six, 700 bucks or something like that with hotels and stuff. And we're about to board the plane. They tell us we get the wrong COVID test. It was like the antigen or something. Uh, which, which was really stupid. Well, and this was like January, like second, we were leaving or something. Um, uh, I got my test. I think like, it was like the, like, I couldn't do it the next day. Like this one place was closed. Um, and then new year's was there. So like a lot of the places were closed and I had to get a very specific, like three day rapid antigen, like, and we couldn't do like, um, the longer ones or, uh, because it had to be within three days so they wouldn't let us board the plane i was so excited because um peru is one of my favorite countries to learn about and i i feel like um if i went there that that might have dethroned turkey it just yeah. everything about it looks beautiful and the history there and different cultures whether it's the moche or chimu yes oh it, it makes me sad it pains me talking about this it you know, I'm, I'm bummed now, but I'll go there one day. Yeah, definitely. You know, we, it really is a special country. You know, there's just very so much to learn. Like you have so many different cities there that are very unique in their own way. Uh, but I'm, I'm glad you got to go to Turkey though and experience that. Yeah, sorry to hear about that though. I, I yeah, I know. Like those tests, like were kind of complicated sometimes. Like you didn't know which one was like required. And man, they give. They working. didn't really give us. It was through Spirit Airlines, which I'll never fly again because of that. Oh, Spirit. <laughs> yeah, no wonder it was so cheap. And my buddy was saying, why don't we just do uh, um, uh, like Delta or something, I think, had flights. It's like, why don't we do Delta instead? It's only like a few hundred dollars more. And I'm like, ah, well, we already got the tickets. Like, well, why go through the hassle of switching it now? And it's like, I don't mind like a smaller seat, like whatever. But yeah, I, I, I regret that now. I wish we did just a Delta. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Well, uh, like I said, you know, next time you can use Delta and, and fly to yes. Peru and spend some. some no more spirit. Yeah. You're and done spirit. spirit. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've heard things. I mean, I've read, I flew with spirit and it's, uh, I could say my pros and cons. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Another time. Um, but yeah. Uh, other than that, you know, Luke, uh, this has been a very fun time to, you know, learn about really you has. And, and, and your work and everything that, what you do. And, um, I think for now, uh, as much as, you know, I am really enjoying this talk, we might, maybe we can have another video, you know, another time. Oh, for sure, man. 
Yeah. Awesome. I, I would love to. This was a blast. Yeah, definitely, man. Um, I, you know, I appreciate you coming on. Um, it's been fun and you know, I look forward to, you know, future videos and other times, uh, to work with you as well. So absolutely. Um, yeah, Thank you, Marcus. Yeah, of course. Make no, sure thanks. to make sure to check out uh, Amateur Archaeology on YouTube as well, and uh, follow Ancient Library on uh, Facebook if you're on there. And uh, we have a YouTube as well. We just uh, started, um, so um, yeah, make sure to check those out. Yeah, of course, and I'll drop those links down in the description below. And uh, yeah, to my audience watching, yeah, please check out you know Luke's channel. It's it's really fun to watch those videos. I, I have a good time. Uh, and, and also, you know, the, um, what was the other we'll one? Be said, revamping it. Library. What's that? Definitely. You said it's called Ancient Library as well. The other yeah, one, yeah, Ancient li Ancient Library. Uh, the one to watch out for on YouTube, especially, is um, some of the uh, uh, the podcasts we're starting to do with like Doctor Hawass is going to be on there, um, and then I'm going to have you on here soon as well. So, yeah, thank you. Yeah, we're looking forward yeah. to that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, again, yeah, thanks Luke and, and audience, you know, thank you guys as well for watching again, check out our, uh, amateur archeology span and, uh, stay tuned for more content ahead. So, um, I'm going to finish this up now and you guys all have a good day or good night. See ya.